Hey everyone, it's Sarah, and today I am back to talk about all of the fragrances that I wore last week. So I've got a ton. I wore so many perfumes last week. I'm gonna jump right in. So the first one we're gonna talk about is this one that came in a smelly mail package. Um, I wanna say week before last. This is a fragrance from Blue Marine, and this is called Bellissima Parfum Intense. I had a bottle of this years ago, and it really just didn't perform well on me at all, so I ended up decluttering it. Um, I always kind of regretted decluttering it because I felt like this was one of those perfumes that if you just let it sit for a while, it would kind of do its thing and become stronger and start to perform better. And I was not wrong because this bottle, which is a much darker color than mine was, if I remember correctly, mine was kind of a, it wasn't, it didn't have like a pink liquid, but it was definitely pinkish. It was kind of a pinkish, lighter version of this color. Um, much lighter than this though. So I knew immediately this one had deepened up. When I tested this one the other night, it is so beautiful and I was right. It has deepened up. It performs really, really well on me now. I sprayed it on to wear to bed thinking that it was gonna end up wearing off and you know, just assuming that it was gonna perform the way that mine had performed and that was not my experience at all. Number one, I oversprayed and it ended up being really, really strong, which was not a bad thing, but it was much stronger than something that I would spray on, you know, to go to bed in. Normally I spray something on like that's pretty light or that's gonna wear off pretty quickly. This did not. Um, I really get Elizabeth Arden True Love vibes from this, for sure. It's really, really similar to True Love, which I love. It's this gorgeous, slightly powdery, perfumey floral, and it smells a lot like True Love, um, even on. So yeah, I could still smell this very strong when I woke up the next morning. I mean, it was not what I was expecting at all. Um, so yeah, this one definitely performs really well for me now. I got at least eight hours out of it because, no, longer than that because I sprayed it on like in the evening, I wanna say maybe seven or so, and I could still smell it when I woke up the next morning, which was, I usually get up about seven in the morning, so a full 12 hours later, and I really, I could smell it until I took a shower that morning. So yeah, this is a, a great little gem. I really love it. If you like fragrances kind of like Elizabeth Arden True Love, I think you would really like this one. Um, I'm super happy to have it back in my collection. So that is the first one. That is Blue, Blue Marine Bellissima Parfum Intense. Next, I, this is a beautiful perfume that I got a sample of in my swap and I loved it. There's nothing super special about it, but I loved this one and I knew it would be inexpensive. So I got on Mercari and found a bottle for $20 with free shipping and so I grabbed it. This is a fragrance from Beekman 1802 and this is called Vanilla Absolute. Salute. This is an eau de toilette formulation. Um, this is such a gorgeous, like heavy bottle. I love the smoky colored cap. Um, it's just a really, really nice bottle. It's very heavy glass, really. I mean, you can see the thickness of the glass on the bottom. That's how thick the glass is before it even gets to liquid. It's very heavy. But yeah, I love this. This is like an ambery vanilla. It's like a light ambery vanilla and I love it. It smells amazing. It's really light on as well. It's not gonna project like crazy. It doesn't last a super long time. I can get a few hours out of it before I would need to reapply, but I fell in love with it. I just love the way it smells because it's like an ambery vanilla, which are some of my favorite vanillas. I just love an ambery vanilla because it makes it, it gives it a little bit of a heaviness, even though this is a pretty light fragrance. It's really beautiful. If you're into perfumes like um, Ombre Vigny from Laura Mercier, something kind of like that, it's definitely not, it doesn't smell like that, but it's that kind of a fragrance, but much lighter. Um, Ombre Vigny from Laura Mercier is like a beast, it lasts forever. This one is lighter, it doesn't last as long, but I just, there was something about it that I loved. So yeah, and I could not believe I found a bottle for $20. So there's nothing super groundbreaking about it and it doesn't perform super well, but I don't know, I just love it. So anyways, that is Beekman 1802 Vanilla Absolute. Okay, next we have Ely Saab Girl of Now. I pulled this out to film my Intoxicating Perfumes Part Two 
and this was one that I couldn't put away until I wear it because I think I talked about it in that video. This one stays like way in the back of my hutch and I will completely forget that I even have it. So um, yeah, I wanted to give this one some love <laughs> before I put it away and I, there's something so incredible about this perfume. It really is just an incredibly intoxicating fragrance. There's something about the orange blossom and the pistachio. It's just stunning. It's perfumey, which I adore. It's like a really sweet, syrupy, but still perfumey fragrance. It's stunning. I love it. It's an absolute monster. I can put this on one time and I am good until I wash it off. It's just, it's amazing. It's an amazing scent. It's one of those perfumes, and I know this isn't for everybody for sure. I know there are some people out there that really just don't like this perfume. I totally understand and I can see why. Um, I don't really like any other Ely Saab fragrances as far as like the Ely Saab Le Parfum and you know, that whole Ely Saab line. I don't really like any of those. Ely Saab's perfumes are, they're incredible incredibly rich fragrances. So I can see somebody not liking this one in the same way that I don't like those ones. Um, but if you do like sweet perfumes, if you're a gourmand lover, golly, this is a must have perfume. It's so stunning. It's not an edible gourmand though. It's gourmand leaning, but not an edible gourmand. It's a perfumey gourmand and it is stunning. I mean, the color of the liquid says it all. It's just so beautiful. This is a perfume I could not live without in my collection. I don't talk about it a ton and I don't even wear it like, you know, I'll wear it a few times a year, but I couldn't live without this one. It's stunning. It's an amazing perfume. So anyways, that is Ely Saab Girl of Now. Okay, next I pulled out, this is a decant. It's, I've had this one sitting out for a while because I've been wanting to wear this. This is, this was sent over to me from a beautiful subscriber and this is Killian Good Girl Gone Bad. I had a carded sample of this years ago. Like, I wanna say maybe 10 years ago. It's been so long ago. I remember really not liking the carded sample because I don't know why I, in my mind, I feel like this had a ton of patchouli in it and it was kind of like a floral patchouli and I just really wasn't into it at all. But that's not what this is at all. This is like a sweet, Floral. It's funny because the name is so dumb. I don't know why anybody would name a perfume that smells like this good girl gone bad. This is just good girl. There's nothing gone bad about this at all. This is like a sweet, delicate, very feminine floral. I'm gonna look this up real, really quickly because there's something about this. There's some note in the background that I cannot pin down. The osmanthus, it's got osmanthus in it and the osmanthus is probably the most prominent note and I absolutely love osmanthus. I used to live in this apartment which was really near a cemetery and I used to take my dog for walks in this cemetery all the time and there were just huge like rows of osmanthus that would grow in there and it smells divine and this perfume smells exactly like those bushes. So yeah, this is Osmanthus, Jasmine and May Rose, Indian Tuberose, Narcissus, Amber and Cedar. It feels like the Tuberose lends a butteriness to the Osmanthus that the Osmanthus wouldn't necessarily have on its own. It's like a buttery Osmanthus. It's stunning. It's so beautiful on skin. It lasts forever. I thought I thought for sure that this was gonna wear off really, really quickly. I sprayed this on and then left the house and I knew I was gonna be gone for, you know, five or six hours or something. And I thought for sure I that was the wrong choice to make. This perfume's gonna wear off before I even get back to the house. And it did not. I could smell this on me the entire day. I was never able to reapply something else. I could smell it on my shirt when I woke up the next morning still. I couldn't smell it on me anymore, but I could still, I could smell it on my shirt where it had like transferred to my pajama shirt and I could still smell it. It was beautiful. I kept getting gorgeous whiffs of it all day long. It, it That's exactly what it is. It's a buttery osmanthus fragrance and it is beautiful. I love it. This might be one my favorite Killian fragrance I've smelled. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of Killian. Well, besides Angel Share, I think Angel Share is probably my favorite one because it's so 
like right up my alley. But this one is fantastic. I want a full bottle of this. So I'm gonna have to, like I'm just gonna have to save. I'm gonna have to buckle down and just start saving money so I can buy a full bottle of this because I need a full bottle of it. It is stunning. So anyways, that is Good Girl Gone Bad from Killian. Okay, next I wore, this is from Serge Luton's. This is another, I'm trying to work through decants. I've got an entire shoebox full of decants like this that you know, I need to pull them out and start working through them. This is Un Bois Vigny from Serge Luton's. I love this perfume. If this, um, I've got about half of this left, so I probably have a couple more wears left in this and then it'll be gone. I adore this perfume. If this performed even a little bit, I would buy a full bottle of this but it doesn't. I can spray this on. I, I sprayed it on as a bedtime fragrance because I knew by the time I actually fell asleep it would be completely gone. So, and I was not wrong. I mean, this perfume lasts all of like maybe 30 minutes to an hour and an hour is being generous. It's, it performs so badly. I love this because it's a vanilla. It's like a, it's kind of a dark vanilla. It's got some licorice in it. Um, I don't think it would be for everybody. In fact, if you're a vanilla lover, I would sample this one first and definitely not blind buy it because not only does it have performance issues, but I don't think that this one would be for everybody. In fact, I've had a lot of people, when I've talked about this fragrance before, I've had a lot of people tell me that they do not like this at all. And again, I completely understand. Uh, I love it. You definitely get the licorice though. The, there's something in it that smooths the licorice out though. It's more like a licorice cookie or like a buttery cookie with licorice in it rather than like black licorice, if that makes any sense. It's, a, it's less harsh smelling than just plain black licorice, like a buttery black licorice cookie, which is weird. I don't know that there's such a thing, but if there were, that's what this smells like. It's so beautiful, I love it. And when I wear it, I enjoy it for those you know, 20 minutes that I can smell it. But yeah, sadly, it just performs horribly. So when I work through this, I will not be revisiting this one because even with my newfound, like I don't care if a, per if a perfume performs well or not really anymore, um, even with my attitude completely changing about the performance of fragrances, this, to me, this is still a little bit intolerable um, because I just don't, I, you really can't enjoy it at all because it wears off so quickly. So anyways, that is Un Bois Vigny from Serge Luton's. Okay, next, I picked these up, I picked these up at the very end of last summer, like, or maybe even early fall this past year. And these are from Ulta. These are perfumes from Ulta. Um, the first one I picked up is Coconut Cream, and the second one I picked up is Sugared Vanilla. So the first one I wore is Sugared Vanilla. This smells almost identical to Warm Vanilla Sugar from Bath & Body Works. It smells exactly like Warm Vanilla Sugar from Bath & Body Works. It's a warm vanilla. It's beautiful. It's a warm, sweet vanilla, and I love it. Um, this one... I think this lasted maybe two hours. It wasn't like the worst thing in the world. It definitely wasn't the Serge Luton's, but it definitely did wear off pretty quickly. And when it did, I just reapplied something else. So yeah, these, you kind of have to treat them like body sprays because they perform like body sprays, really. Um, I would not purchase it again because I've got a fragrance in my collection that actually smells like warm vanilla sugar that lasts a really long time. It's a Gail Heyman, um, it's Gail Heyman Delicious Vanilla. It's very, very similar to Warm Vanilla Sugar and it actually lasts on me. This doesn't. In fact, I might just go ahead and layer this with that just until I work through this. Um, I've only worn this one time. That's how much I sprayed on because I really did use it like a body spray. So I've probably got two more uses in this and then it'll be gone. I do like it. I paid, I think like, six dollars for this so um which is pricey when you think that it's basically like paying six dollars for a little tiny body spray um you could probably get like a body fantasies or a body ecology spray for 387 or something at walmart and have better luck with it but yeah it's fine it was okay um i love the way it smells it just doesn't perform well and then i wore this one here this is co the coconut cream one and 
I love this one. This smells like, it smells like it's got pineapple in it, so it smells like a coconut, like a pineapple coconut daiquiri, like a tropical, you know, like a tropical drink or something. It's really beautiful, but very coconut heavy, but it's more like a pineapple juicy coconut, if that makes sense. Um, again, I used it like a body spray. And when this one started to wear off, or actually, this one, I because I knew the vanilla one had worn off so quickly, I knew this one would too. So to kind of, to make this one last longer, I put an oil on first. So I put on this Kumba Me. This is the black copium oil that I just picked up. This is one, I didn't know how I was going to feel about this one because this is like a, it's like an incense-y coconut. In fact, that's what it smells like. It smells like a coconut incense. And I really love it. I love the way that it smells on skin. It kind of smells like a beachy hippie shop. Um, so I put that one on and then I layered the coconut, um, coconut cream from Ulta over it. And it was a gorgeous combination. Um, the combination lasted for the entire day. I mean, I think I was able to spray something on maybe before bed that night, but this was, this was it. And it was hot that day. It was like 85 degrees, I think, the day that I wore this. So it was like a perfect day for coconut. And yeah, it was lovely. This combination, eight hours easily, got me through eight hours. So anyways, that is Ulta Coconut Cream and Kumba Made Black Copium stunning. Okay, and then I've got a whole bunch of the uh, decants from my decant swap that I did recently that I tested. So the first one is this one called Trusardi. Uh, this has a super long name, so obviously she can only put like one word. This is Trusardi Passagiata, I think is how you say it. Um, I'll have the whole name on the screen though, but you'll see it's like it's gonna take up the whole screen. It's so long. This is gorgeous. This is like perfumey almond cookies. It's so good. It reminds me of a really strong version of Mandorlo di Cecilia from um, Aqua de Parma. This smells like a really, really intense version of that. This one is more gourmand than that one though. This smells like something to eat. It's amazing. It smells so good. If I ever came across a bottle of this for like a decent price, I do think that I would absolutely pick up a full bottle. It's stunning. It lasted for a very long time. I think I it didn't last like the entire day. Again, I remember being able to apply something else that day. I got a good seven hours out of it probably, seven or eight hours. It lasted a really long time. It performed really well. Um, it was strong. It was really strong for most of the day. Um, definitely near the end, maybe the last couple hours, it started to kind of wear very close to the skin. But I wanna say like the, uh, the first maybe five or six hours, it definitely projected. It was just really, really strong. I was in heaven. I love it. I love this. It smells amazing. It's like everything that you want Aqua de Parma, um, Mandorla de Cecilia to be. I ended up decluttering my Mandorlo, Mandorlo because it just performed really badly on me. I would get a couple hours out of it max, which back then was just completely, <laughs> I was just not gonna deal with it at all. Um, this is what I always wanted it to be though. Oh gosh, this is so good. It's so good. So anyways, that is Trusardi Passia. Pasagatia, Pasagiata, sorry. Next we have got, I think it's Brie Court Farah. I'm pretty sure, oh my gosh, it's so good. This is the one that I told you smells like a, like an apple pie amber. It's got, um, this one has got like dates and honey, cinnamon, uh, benzoin in the base. It's, it smells like an apple pie amber. It's gorgeous. It lasted forever. It's an absolute beast. It performs incredibly well. It smells like um, it smells like Hermes Ombre Nargile or Boucheron Ombre de Alexandre. It smells like that, or even um, K Alley Invite Only Amber. Yeah, it smells 
something like one of those fragrances, it's stunning. I've got both Ombre Nargile as well as Boucheron Ombre d'Alexandrie, so I definitely don't need a full bottle of this, but I did use my entire sample. It smells incredible, it lasts amazingly well. This is one that if you're looking for an amazing like apple pie smelling amber, this is one that I would definitely recommend. It performs like a beast, it smells amazing, and yeah, I really enjoyed this one. So that is Brie Court Farah. Okay, the next one I wore, this is Brie Court Ombre Noir, and this is gorgeous. This is kind of a more traditional smelling amber. This one's hard to compare, compare to because it's an amber, but I don't really have anything in my collection that smells exactly like this amber. It's something like L'Artisan uh, L'Eau d'Ombre Extreme or Histoire de Parfum um, Ombre 114. It's something like one of those ambers, but this one is a little bit lighter. This one is way more vanilla heavy, so those are more of kind of a slightly musty traditional amber. This one is a really vanilla heavy, but not super sweet, just really vanilla heavy. It's very smooth, but still a really beautiful traditional smelling amber. It's gorgeous. I enjoyed this one so much. I love it. I will enjoy the rest of it. Um, it's beautiful. I love amber perfumes. They're some of my favorite perfumes in my collection. And yeah, if I ever ran across a bottle of this somewhere, I would absolutely pick it up. It's gorgeous. It's a beautiful amber if you like amber. Um, or this would make, I think this would be a great beginner amber for somebody. For somebody that's like, eh, I don't know if I'm into ambers. I don't know if I want to smell, you know, like a traditional amber. Um, I really don't like anything really musty smelling. This would be a great place to start because it's very low on the mustiness and like very high on the smooth vanilla. And I think it would just be a great place to start dipping your toes into ambers. So anyways, that is Brie Court Ombre Noir. Okay, next I've got this one here. I'll have the name of the house on the screen for you. I did find it. I was able to find it on um, Fragrantica. This one is called Strawberry Kiss and yeah, I used like most of this sample when I wore it. This is beautiful. It's from a house called Sentonic. Somebody asked me if I could smell something in this one and I hadn't tested it yet, so I wasn't able to, I wasn't able to answer. Um, if you see this and you were the one that commented asking, ask me again and I'll be able to tell you this time. I love this. This is such a beautiful, this is like a, a grown up, well, I don't want to say like super grown up, but it's a much more grown up strawberry than something like strawberry pound cake from Bath and Body Works. It's so beautiful. Um, this one is strawberry, red apple, and citruses, freesia and rose, raspberry, musk, sandalwood, and amber. Um, I want to, maybe sh they asked if I could smell the rose in this. Yes, but it's a really, really fresh watery rose. It's not like a traditional rose at all. It's, this is, it's really, really light, bright, citrusy. You definitely get the strawberry and it's like a, kind of like a fresh candied strawberry scent. It's really, really beautiful. This one I got about three hours out of before I just couldn't smell it anymore. Um, so you're definitely, it's not like, it's not fantastic, but it's not the worst either. It's really, really pretty. You definitely do get the rose, but again, it's a very fresh, watery rose and like a beautiful candied, fresh strawberry. I think the candied aspect of it though is actually coming from the red apple and that mixed with the strawberry is kind of what gives you this candied strawberry note. Really, really beautiful, just doesn't perform the best. I'm trying to remember. I don't know. I didn't layer it over any lotion. So next time um, I'll put on my strawberry pound cake lotion and layer this over and see if that helps. Um, it probably will. But yeah, that is Strawberry Kiss from a house called Sentonic. And then last but not least, I wore this one here. This is the Chocolate, Qu Chocolate Queen from Navitas. I, I hope that's how you say that. And this one is really, really gorgeous. I ended up liking this one a lot more than I thought I was going to, only because I'm very picky and very fussy with my chocolate perfumes. Um, I'm not a huge fan of like a synthetic chocolate smell and I just, I had no idea how, how this one was gonna go. 
This one was so strange, but in a good way. When I first sprayed this on, I was almost getting like Dolce & Gabbana light blue vibes, which is very strange because this is like not a fresh perfume at all, but there is a freshness to it and it's stunning. It keeps it from being over the top or being too much. That's another thing, when I was reading through the notes, I was like, golly, that is like throwing the kitchen sink at it. That's got everything that, those are all really like heavy gourmand notes. And I thought for sure it was just gonna end up being, um, and you see that sometimes with indie houses where they'll just like throw every heavy gourmand note that you that you would even be able to think of into a fragrance and then it kind of ends up being a mess because you end up not being able to really smell anything you just smell this like weird super sweet like cacophony and i was worried that that might happen with this and it did not at all this one is really really nice i mostly get it's almost like a, and this is just me and how, how it was on my body chemistry, but it smelled like Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue if you added this beautiful like chocolate ganache to it, which sounds really weird, but it smells delicious. It smells so good. It's like a really sweet, yummy, fresh chocolate fragrance. I don't even know any other way to explain it because and that's what it ended up smelling like on me and when i was first spraying it i was like wow that i'm getting like dolce and gabbana light blue vibes um and actually less dolce and gabbana light blue and more um our moth tag her our moth tag her has some like creamy sweet notes in it so it smells like light blue but it's got this really beautiful yummy creamy sweet base and that's what this smells like, kind of like our moth tag her. But then if you added this yummy chocolate and maybe a touch of booze, so like booze or a boozy chocolate note. It's so good. I would absolutely buy a full bottle of this. In fact, I need to get on and look. It's so good. And that's another thing out of the bottle. I don't know. I, it smells completely different in the bottle or in the decant than it actually does on my skin. On me, it's... I don't know. I have very strange skin chemistry though, so leave it to me to turn a super decadent gourmand chocolate fragrance into something that smells like Dolce and Gabbana or, or Moth Tag Her with chocolate. Leave it to me. Lasts forever. This somewhere between six and eight hours, I would say, lasts forever. It just, it smells incredible. I love it. So that is Chocolate Queen from Navitas. And that is gonna be it, guys. Those are all of the fragrances that I wore last week. I do hope that you all enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.